everyone, welcome to another Classic Movie Monday, and today I thought it would be interesting to dive into something that's a little bit more unique and a little bit of what we would probably consider a non-traditional classic. Some might even call it a cult classic, but I think it was fairly popular uh, when it did come out, and I think it's sparked a lot of people's interest over the years, and there's been books on this film, on the philosophy that it's trying to convey, and a bunch of crazy uh, fun ideas, you know, memes, uh, things like that. So uh, I think it would only make sense that I would discuss The Big Lebowski, um, as you can see by the title and thumbnail. Now, this is probably considered one of Jeff Bridges' um, uh, standouts. Um, usually when you think of Jeff Bridges, who do you think of? Uh, a lot of people think of the dude. Because <laughs> uh, the dude is a very interesting character that he plays. Um, and uh, the reason why I think this film as a whole is rather interesting and unique is because it doesn't really follow the sort of traditional sort of three-act structure of a film, uh, which is usually primarily within the majority of how films are made. You have a beginning, you have a middle, and you have an end. Whereas with The Big Lebowski, it just sort of kind of just drips um, and cruises through the entire time. And things ultimately do connect and do make sense. But at the same time, it sort of kind of gets lost within itself. Um, and I think a lot of the times that's how life is like. Um, usually our... Uh, lives don't play out like three-act structures, um, and it's nice to see a film that tries to kind of go within this area and uh, do a different take onto how to ultimately present a film. Um, what I also think that a lot of people enjoy from this film is, again, obviously Jeff Bridges' perform Jeff Bridges' performance, as well as his character, uh, because this character is actually fairly likable, um, even if he has his flaws. Um, the dude is a very lazy, uh, very, uh, kind of go with the flow kind of a guy. He, he doesn't really contribute all that much. Um, he is nowhere by means an achiever, but at the same time, you know, he just kind of just sits and enjoys his life and he doesn't, uh, he, he doesn't really complain or, um, feel like he needs to, you know, go out of his way to, to do more. He just kind of just, you know, sits back and, you know, just cruises a lot like the film does. <laughs> um, and that I think only makes sense considering that he is the main character, that this kind of plot would sort of go in the similar direction as his sort of outlook on life. Um, but... The best way in which I can sum up the plot, um, without giving too much away, is basically Jeff Bridges is mistaken, and also you could say tec technically misinterpreted for somebody else, and this ultimately leads him onto a very sort of complicated, uh, crazy journey. Um, and again, this journey is not... Well, even though there is sort of a beginning, middle, and end, the plot, again, is very drifty. It's, it's not straight-edged at all. Um, so there is a lot of sort of mishaps and different things that end up coming up. And life, I think, is oftentimes a lot like that. It's, it's full of randomness and kind of funny and yet strange moments. And I think this film was really trying to capture that. Um, that element, uh, and I think it does it just so, so brilliantly well. Um, also the supporting cast of John Goodman, uh, Julianne Moore, uh, Steve Buscemi, those are all fun little, uh, side characters that do end up sort of, um, being a part of sort of Jeff Bridges' supposed journey, I guess you could say, in some way, shape, or form, um, or s have some sort of uh, connection to his life. And uh, that's really 
at the heart so much at the heart of this film so uh it's more about the interactions between the characters and the crazy things that end up occurring um not based upon just the circumstances and again that leads to a lot of really entertaining moments i think um now granted this is not a traditional classic this is not the black and white um obviously the black and white is way more traditional uh it is really structured and there is a lot of detail and you know things like that not saying that uh the big lebowski doesn't have a lot of interesting details too and has things that in it that you probably didn't notice the first time that you watched it but at the same time it still falls into this category of not being as straightforward um not being a film that's so much about the story as it is about the sort of experience of the story and i think a lot of films especially around this sort of 90s period were kind of trying to do that i think it was a very experiment time within or within film uh where you did see a lot of kind of randomness uh sort of coming out um and i think there is a good reason for that and i think a lot of that is contributed to the big lebowski um and i know there's some people who might consider this film maybe a little bit overrated for what it is and the thing that i usually like judging these classic categories on is, is i usually like to think is the film doing something that's you know that that stands out at least that that's trying to do something interesting and does it in a way that maybe is a little bit more superior or better than maybe um some other films who did try to do maybe a similar thing um and to me i can't really think of a lot of films that are like the big lebowski um so i i think overall uh what it what's it, its intentions are are really what you get with this film and i think that's why it it maintains this uh this level of interest to people because it's so unlike uh a lot of traditional films that we're so used to seeing and i think a lot of people were really open to this idea of experimenting with films like this and doing it in a way that's again interesting and fun to watch um and the dude is fun to watch and you know the scenarios are a lot of fun there's a lot of uh really cool jokes and goofy things that end up happening and it ultimately amounts to you know as to kind of shrugging and going hey that's life um you know not really providing again the audience sort of really all the answers or tying things up really so much as it's just that's just how life is sometimes it's really strange there's a lot of things that don't end up making sense but at the end of the day you know um the oddities leave sort of an impact on you and i think you sort of see that within the ending of the film um where it is just jeff bridges in the bar <laughs> so you know it, it it is one of those kinds of uh films and i think it works ultimately overall uh because it's different and it's trying something new um and uh again sort of similar to there will be blood and how it was doing something very i think unique and interesting um and this is uh and the big lebowski does this has this interesting unique take too that again is totally different from there will be blood but again it it tries to drift from the traditional film norms um and that's why i think a lot of people enjoyed it and i think that's why a lot of people still continue to enjoy it um is it perfect absolutely not can i compare this to something like the wizard of oz or uh casablanca no i mean they're obviously completely different films and i don't like putting one classic is somehow superior to another classic and i think there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to filmmaking um 
But I think what made The Big Lebowski stand out to me was, was I thought it was unique. And I thought overall for what it was doing was interesting. Um, and uh, I think is definitely worth your time if you're interested in those kinds of films. If you like films that kind of drift away from the traditional classic norm, I think The Big Lebowski is a perfect place to start. <laughs> But uh, if you kind of are more along the lines of liking the three-act structure and liking um, the, the straightforwardness and, you know, wrapping things up all in one big bow and, you know, big climaxes and all that stuff, um, then, then I'd say stick to, you know, um, the traditional classics like uh, The Wizard of Oz or, you know, or uh, Casablanca, you know, to, if you enjoy that more, then that's then that's not there's nothing wrong with that. But I personally enjoy both uh, styles. I think they're both interesting and unique. But I think that's really ultimately all I can say about the Big Lebowski with really not giving anything away because if I give away this plot, it kind of ruins the um, the enjoyment because there's just tons of random goofy things that uh, end up happening. And I think if you are really into the goofiness, the weird oddities, uh, then you will find a lot of enjoyment, I think, out of this film. But if you don't, then I'd say this is probably not the classic for you. But I think that's really ultimately all I can say. However, if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I would be more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day, week, month, and year. And I hope to see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.